All right, let's move on to airport runway and taxiway signs, markings, and lightings. We've still got 15 minutes. So again, markings, lights, and signs, which provide direction and assist pilots in airport operations. We're going to cover runway incursion avoidance, airport markings, airport signs, airport lights, and visual aids. Why do we care? Because understanding markings, lights, and signs will greatly assist in avoiding confusion as well as runway incursions and provide the ability to more easily maneuver through an airport complex. No, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, in general, you should study and know airport signs and uh, proper phraseology. Uh, the, air, the Aeronautical Information Manual actually has a whole chapter, I think, dedicated to airport signs. Go study them. They're, they, I feel like they're pretty self-explanatory. I think the FAA made them so that they should be pretty clear what they mean when you see them, right? Anytime you're taxiing on the surface, have your taxi diagram out on your kneeboard uh, and you know, follow along with your position uh, on, the, uh, on the airport. Review notams. These are notices to airmen. This should be part of your pre-flight planning anyways. So be aware if there are any taxiway closures or runway closures. Uh, write down your taxi instructions, read them back, and specifically say hold short uh, if they tell you to hold short anywhere. You should always turn on your taxi lights as you're taxiing. Maintain good situational awareness. Don't text and taxi, right? Don't text and drive. Pay attention to what you're doing, especially on the ground. Uh, don't be that guy, right? Uh, check for traffic. Anytime you're crossing an intersection, if you're coming through here and you see, you know, you're crossing to it or you're turning onto a different taxiway, look both ways. I mean, it's pretty, pretty basic stuff. You guys all drive cars. You should be good to go. Uh, if you're ever lost or confused, you can always stop and ask ATC for help. You can ask for something called progressive taxi. If you're like, hey, S uh, Pain Tower or Cessa 3 Echo is unfamiliar with the airport, request progressive taxi. Then they will talk you through your taxiing to the runway or wherever you're going. Uh, when you're landing, land the plane, fly the plane first. Don't worry about trying to make it off to a specific taxiway. Um, but once you are able to get off the runway expeditiously and obtain a taxi clearance before continuing. So when you land, fly the plane, don't try to rush yourself. But when you're off the runway, make sure to talk to ground before you, uh, you taxi away. Good so far? Cool. Uh, so this is, these are some of the types of runways you might see. And this is for a visual approach. You're going to have the landing designator and center line. Um, and then non-precision approach, you're going to have the landing designator, center line, and the threshold. And then precision approach, you're going to have these aiming points added on top as well. And this is some more information about it here. The thresholds like the end of the runway. These are the threshold markings. Your designation, this is the, the, the compass direction uh, that the runway is aligned with. L, or R, or C will tell you if they're left, right, or center. Uh, your aiming points for your IFR approaches. Uh, these chevrons are not to be used for anything. You can't taxi, take off, or land on these. You can taxi on the taxiway. You can depart from this section here, but you can't land on it. And then you can land beyond here. So this is okay for a taxi takeoff. This is okay for landing. This is only for taxi. The number of stripes will actually give you information about uh, the width of the runway. If you have four stripes, it's a 60-foot wide runway. Six is 75. Eight is 100, et cetera. Uh, you can actually find this information um, on the FAA's website. I think it's the Terminal Public uh, Publica uh, Terminal Procedure Publications. Um, I'll double check and I'll uh, I'll post it for you guys. Now let's talk about taxiway markings. The center line marking uh, when this is yellow strip here. We're basically going to just follow the yellow line, follow the yellow brick road as we taxi on the airport. If you see this, though, this means we need to stop and get an additional clearance. Two hard lines with two uh, dash lines, uh, it's a hold short position, right? These are your shoulder markings. Black square, you are there. That's a location sign. A yellow square with an arrow tells you the direction of a taxiway. That's the direction sign. Uh, edge markings. Uh, yeah. Again, I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, once you see them, they kind of start to make sense. So here, uh, I have a question about yeah, go ahead. the runway expeditiously. That was a few slides ago. Does that mean when you sure. land, you just kind of go into the first taxiway you see, like within reason or within reason? Yeah, I would be very cautious. Like, yeah, the first taxiway I see, you know, you could be pulling the e-brake and skidding, right? 
Yeah. You don't want to do that. You want to land controlled stop essentially, and then roll to the nearest taxiway. Yeah. There's no, they, they might tell you exit at alpha six, but if you're not going to make it, you can just say unable or just continue to alpha seven. Right. Um, yeah. And just remember that, you know, heavy aircraft behind you, they're getting paid to fly. So you can take up all the time you need to be safe. I'd rather you be safe and uh, make somebody else go around than, um, than try to stop too soon and uh, damage the aircraft or yourself. Okay. Yeah. So let's see, starting from here, uh, these are uh, hold short. They, they basically, anything that's red is like a stop sign. Uh, you want to hold short of these positions and get additional clearance. Uh, two solid and two dashed lines, again, is a hold short marking. Black square, you are there. Uh, tells you you are on taxiway Bravo. Um, this is for instrument landing systems. So if they tell you to hold short of the ILS critical area, that's because they're probably using the instrument landing system and you don't want to interfere with it. Uh, yeah. Yep, here are some other markings, VOR checkpoints. A big X tells you that portion of the runway is closed or the runway is closed or taxiway is closed. Uh, these non-movement area boundaries are very similar to our holding short markings for runways. Uh, but instead of two and two, we have one hard line and one dashed line. It tells you you need to hold short here and get additional clearance to taxi past this line. If you're on the dash side, you're good to go. You're, you're good to, you know, taxi over and then these zipper lines are for cars or vehicles right so if you are able to get your car onto the runway or onto the uh, air, uh, airport you can drive on these areas with your car let's talk about airport signs there are six types of airport signs mandatory instruction location direction destination information and runway distance remaining these are mandatory instruction signs uh, they denote the entrance to a runway or a critical area uh, or area where aircraft are prohibited, right? So if you see a big red sign, that should make you pause, right? So these are runways, uh, runway approach area hold position, uh, ILS critical uh, area hold position, and a no entry sign. Now, these are location signs. Uh, black square, you are there. Again, it tells you you are on taxiway tango. This is a runway location sign. A number tells you you're on a runway. This is a runway boundary sign. If you're on this side, you can taxi past without additional clearance. If you're on this side, you need to stop and get additional clearance. And this is the ILS critical area boundary sign. If they tell you to hold short of this, you need to hold short. These are direction signs. You're going to see a bunch of uh, yellow signs with arrows pointing all over the place. They tell you that taxiway echo is off to your left. You are on taxiway alpha. Taxiway Tango is off to your right, right? Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there are some additional signs. Uh, this is, uh, denotes military areas. Um, they indicate the destination of the airports or runways, aprons, terminals, military areas, civil area, aviation areas, cargo areas, international areas, FBOs, et cetera. Uh, information signs provide information on things like areas that the tower can't see radio frequencies, noise abatement procedures. You might see those uh, you know, before you get onto the runway. This is a runway distance remaining sign. A black square with a white number tells you that there are 3,000 feet of runway remaining. So if you see a four there, it'd be 4,000 feet. This is important. I always note, when I, if I'm not taking off full length, I always note, all right, we've got 3,000 feet of runway remaining. Very important. Uh, let's get into airport lighting and visual aids. And we got six minutes left. All right. Uh, there's the ALS, the VASI, and the PAPI, runway and identifier lights, runway edge light systems, in runway lighting, controlling light systems, airport beacons, and taxiway lights. This is the approach light system. Uh, they all look very similar. They tell you a lot of the same information. If you go and study these, they actually tell you how uh, what visibility you have at that runway. Um, but again, it's more in depth than you really need to know. This is what they look like. Uh, then there's the visual approach slope indicator. If you, um, if you're coming into land, you should see this at the end of the runway, uh, two red, right over red means you're dead. You're too low white and red. This is, if it's balanced, you're good. You're on glide slope. And if too white, you are going to fly all night. You're too high <clears throat> for a three bar Vazi, all red, you're dead. You're too low. 
two red over white, you're on the lower glide path. Uh, one red over two white, you're on the upper glide path. And then all white, again, you're going to fly all night. You want a balanced approach. And then these are other VASI configurations you might see. Again, you're looking for a balanced VASI or a PAPI. The Precision Approach Path Indicator, or the PAPI, provides visual descent guidance during the approach to a runway. Uh, it's very similar to a VASI, but in a single row of either two or four lights. So you're going to see green if you're on glide path, red if you're on below, amber if you're slightly um, low or slightly high. All right. There's also the pulsating PAPI. I got to tell you, I haven't never actually seen one of these before, um, but you might see a pulsating white light, steady white, steady red, or pulsating red, depending on where you are in relation to the glide path. Then the rails, <clears throat> these are the runway and identifier lights. Uh, they are installed to provide rapid, positive identification of the runway end of a runway. Uh, they are a pair of synchronized flashing lights located on either side of the runway threshold. Then there's the runway edge light system. Uh, basically, it just shows you the outline of the runway, and they can be in different intensities. When you're going to a non-towered airfield, you can actually turn on the, the lights yourself by clicking the CTAF frequency three, five, or seven times. So three is low, five is medium, and then uh, seven is high for the uh, intensity of the light. Uh, yeah. If you see red, you're getting towards the end of the runway, basically. Let's see, there's the in-runway lighting uh, that's gonna include the runway centerline light system that's gonna tell you where the center line is. Uh, it's gonna be pretty much white until you get to the last 3,000 feet where it alternates red and white. And then a 1,000 feet from the end of the runway, that's gonna be all red. It's gonna tell you, hey, you need to stop now or you're going to you know, run out of runway soon. There's the touchdown zone lights on some precision runways to indicate the touchdown zone in adverse visibility. And then there's the taxi center line leadoff lights. These provide visual guidance for exiting the runway. You'll see alternating green or yellow lights from the runway center line to one light position beyond the hold position. There's the taxiway center line lead on lights. These provide visual guidance for getting onto the runway. And there's the same color as a lead off, bi directional. So one side light emits light for lead on, and the other for the lead off. Then there's the land and hold short lights used to uh, tell you where to hold short on some right runways, approved for lasso. Uh, that's, again, land and hold short operations. Yeah, row of pulsating white lights installed across the runway. You get the idea. Again, most of this stuff is pretty obvious when you see it. It's going to look like a giant runway that's lit up like a Christmas tree. Blue is a taxiway. White is, for the most part, runways. Uh, at a towered airport, your control tower is going to control the lighting. But like I said before, if you are a, at a non-towered airport, you can uh, use the CTAF frequency Click it a, a couple of times to uh, change the, the intensity of the lights. If you see an airport beacon operating during the day, it typically means that it's instrument flight rules. So VFR pilots are going to have a rough time. Uh, but again, they're used to identify airports and differentiate between types of airports. So at night, these will be helpful to see. White and green is land airport. White and yellow is a seaport. White, white, green is a military airport. Uh, green, yellow, and white is a lighted heliport. Again, if you see the operate, uh, operation of the beacon during the day, it's a good chance it's IFR conditions, or it is IFR conditions. Uh, yeah. Yeah, taxiway uh, edge lights, like I said, are blue. Center lights are white for the most part, except you know, when we get to the end of the runway. Um, trying to move on here. We've only got two minutes left. Yeah. Yeah, any questions? I think, like I said, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you see red, it's, you know, pay attention, stop. Uh, any questions about runway stuff or any, any thoughts on the course that you guys are taking? Which, by the way, you guys are doing great. No? Still got another minute. Cool. Well, I'll stick around for another minute or so. Uh, if nothing else, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I really appreciate it. It's really cool that you guys are sticking with it. Um, if I have, if there's any way I can improve, please let me know. I know I tend to go a little fast. If I need to slow things down or if I need to cut it, you know, cut some things out, let me know. Um, and if you're not enjoying it, please let me know. I really don't want to waste your time. What's the what's the ETA on the Redbird instruction again? I know you went over that last week, but uh Yeah, so I am not um I'm not actually in charge of the Redbird simulator. Um so I don't know when they're planning on rolling that out. 
uh, I'm going to talk to Devon about that and see when, um, see if I can, you know, get trained to make sure that I'm doing everything right. If I go and train you guys on it. Uh, but right now I'm not the uh, Redbird guy. Hope that helps. Are there going to be any opportunities for you to like help us out on Sims or like instruct us on Sims, you know, get flight hours basically on a Sim? Yes. Yeah. I'm working on that. I'm working on uh, simulator time and I'm working on um, actual aircraft time. Uh, I'll announce that when I have a bit more, when things are more secure. Yeah. I don't want to say anything too early, you know, promise something and then it turns out it's wrong, you know? So yeah. Check back soon. Sorry. Sweet. Well, thanks again for hanging out with me, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll post this uh, once I get the audio and the visual, you know, synced up. I'll post it on the on the YouTube channel, and we'll be good to go. If nothing else, it's good seeing you guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you.